experience more and more of who God is and you really come to appreciate you know how special you are because if we are truthful to ourselves when we look at whence we came from and where we are now we really you know have to give God thanks and praise you know um, as, as it says um, empty and broken I came to you you know um, and God really picked up all the pieces of our brokenness and made us into who we are now. So we're really giving God thanks and praise. You know, um, we have been, over the past few weeks, we have been going through several books um, in the, several chapters, I should say, in the book of Romans. And um, when, do, when, you, when you go through the book of Romans from, say, chapter 1 to chapter 11, you realize that there are some things that the Apostle Paul did not mince his word on. So you could say that he was dogmatic on those things. But we saw hope also in those things because like in chapter 7, he told us that um, you know, although he understood the things that he wanted to do, but he found out that there was something else working in him that wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. But rather than you know, allow frustration to overcome him and get the better of him. You know, he got he, he, he gave us the answer because he says, you know, oh wretched man, who can save me from this, you know, terrible state that I am in? And then he gave thanks to Jesus Christ because he understood that Jesus Christ is our all in all. Amen. Um, if 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 you want a title for the message today, simply um that we should clothe ourselves, you know, in the, in the person of Jesus Christ. Simple, but profound. Yes. Once we realize, brothers and sisters, who we are now, as I said earlier, once we understand where we are coming from, then the question we should be asking is not, what do I do now, now that I understand you know what Jesus Christ has done for me you know and we we think we would want to do some stuff for him but the question should be not what should I do now the question should be who am I and once you can un, un answer that question of who am I then you will truly see very clearly of what do I do now amen yes and um this is what Paul is going to explain to us in the book of Romans chapter 13. Because he started out in chapter 12. And he says that, yes, the fact that you understand that you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Then in verse 1 of chapter 12, um, reading from the New Living Translation, and I really love how it reads here. It says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you. So this is something very serious. He says, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So, brothers and sisters, we understand what the Apostle Peter says, that we should grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once he has saved us, well, he has saved us a long time ago. But once we have come to the knowledge of what he has done for us, then we should not be on that same level. If somebody sees you, you know, um, several years from now, they shouldn't say, boy, you haven't changed at all. <laughs> You're the same person. <laughs> yes, that would be, that, that, that would truly be saying something bad, that you are not, you have not been growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Right? So, Paul here starts in Romans 13 by explaining to us 
that we should have an attitude of submission. And what he is explaining to us is that if you cannot submit to the authority that you see physically with your two eyes, then I think you're going to have a difficult time in submitting to the one who you cannot see. So he starts with, and, and, and you know, um, as, as I thought about it, you know, I had to smile because um, he's telling us to submit to a body of persons who a lot of people don't necessarily like. Because <laughs> he said that as a Christian, you must submit to the governing authority. Because God is the one who has placed them there. And what he's saying is that when you submit to him, to, to the governing authority, you need not fret if you are doing the right and proper things. I remember my grandmother used to tell me, you know, because I was afraid of policemen when I was a little boy. Even if they didn't carry a, a firearm, they only had a baton. But just the uniform, you know, and most of them were tall, you know, because we were small, you know. But she was always saying, Courtney, if you do not do wrong, you don't need to fret about the policemen. So it's the same thing with the governing authority. If you abide by the, the rules and the regulations that they set down, then you'll be okay. So Paul starts here by saying in verse 1 of chapter 13, Everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God. And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So, it happens in the governing body of the world. It happens in the church, because sometimes the pastor that we have, we don't necessarily like him because of certain things that he may be doing. But God says we should submit ourselves to the governing authority because without humility brothers and sisters we will not be able to allow the holy spirit to guide us to lead us into that path that we are supposed to take right and once we understand our identity once we understand who we are in jesus christ then submission won't be such a big problem because brothers and sisters our identity is very clear our true identity is very clear we are Christians we are children of God adopted into God's royal family not just any any family we have been adopted into God's royal family so we are everything second we are doctors second we are nurses second we are teachers second we are accountants second. We are Christians first and foremost. And once we understand that identity, then it will truly affect who we are um, in, with our talents in a way that it will allow our lights to shine. The light of Jesus Christ will truly shine through us. So please remember that, that we are God's children first and foremost. We are not identified, brothers and sisters, by our status. Because a lot of people allow their status to really corrupt their minds. Once they get a little power, it creeps up. And the focus is not on serving those you know, who have been assigned to them. But their focus is... That is why Jesus Christ has to tell us that he said, if you want to be a leader, you first must become a servant. Submit yourself. That is what Jesus Christ did. He came to earth, left his divinity, and he came to earth as a man, and he submitted himself to the governing authority. He paid his taxes. He told the persons that they should render to Caesar what was due to Caesar. Because he understood what authority was all about. The only thing you need to understand is that if the authorities are going to put things in your way for you to, 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 um, to not worship the God of this creation, then you will definitely know how you should choose. Amen? Yes. So let us continue in, in um, 
Romans chapter 13. Let us jump down to verse 8. And it is showing us, you know, brethren, that a transformation must take place once you have surrendered yourself to God. In verse 8, it says, Owe nothing to anyone except. So there's one thing that you need to be obligated to every human being on the planet. It says, Owe oh, nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, so he's not just saying that you should love those who are believing the same thing that you are believing. He's saying that the neighbors who you don't necessarily know as such, he's saying that your responsibility is to love your neighbor and in so doing you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. For the commandments say you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. And he continues in verse 10. Love does no wrong to others. So love fulfills the requirements of God's law. You know, there's a story of a man and his wife, you know, and they just brought a place. And um, when they bought the place, they realized that um, the, the neighbor's pipe, you know, was just running around the back, flooding out their yards. And, you know, they went and they spoke to the neighbor. And, you know, the neighbor didn't spend any time you know, trying to remedy the situation. But they were Christians. And the thought came to them, why don't we plant some stuff that needs a lot of water? So they planted some stuff, man, some vegetables, and the things just sprung up and, you know, bigger, man, bigger. And when it was time to reap, they reap, and they knock up the neighbor, say, come, man, Getting some blessing out of what you gave to us. So they say, no. They say, yes. All of that water that is flowing out of here, this is, you know, the fruit from it. So enjoy. And that was, that, that attitude changed the neighbor because the pipe was fixed right away. Because they say, love covers a multitude of sin. Cannot fight evil with evil. You cannot fight fire by fueling more um, liquid, um, combustible liquid onto it. All right? So, brothers and sisters, we really need to have that fundamental shift. And it goes right down because in verse 11, Paul tells us, he says, this is all the more urgent for you know how late it is. When you see the times, when you see how man is, you know, getting more evil in the things that he do. We should understand that our salvation is nearer now than when we first began. So Paul is reminding us that this is urgent, urgent time now. We need to really get about doing what we need to be doing. Because he says, this is all the more urgent. For you know how late it is. Time is running out. Not in respect to our salvation, you know. Because we, have saved, we are saved already. But we have assigned, we have been assigned to be doing some stuff. If a change is not happening in us on a daily basis... How can the light of Jesus Christ shine through us that men may see our good works and in turn glorify the Father in heaven? It won't happen. So we need to really be about our Father's business. So Paul continues, wake up for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Verse 12, the night is almost gone. You know the night refers here to the evil, all the evil in the world. So what he's saying is that, you know, salvation is coming for everything. Not just us, but even for the very creation itself. 
The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. The return of Jesus Christ, what we have been praying for. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we understand that this day of salvation will soon be here. So Paul is telling us that the fact that this is right at our doorstep, then we need to be removing some stuff out of our way and we need to be putting on some stuff. If we go to the book of Colossians, and these are things that we, we read all the while, you know, brothers and sisters. We just need to focus more on them. In Colossians chapter 3, Paul tells us that we have a responsibility of living the new life that God has given to us. And in verse 1, he says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life. You died to the darkness that has permeated the whole world. And your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ who is your life is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So Paul starts here now by telling us, that we need to put off some things out of our lives because of what God has done to us. So in verse 5 he says, So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater worshipping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. Verse 7, you used to do, you used to do these things when your life was still a part of the world. We used to do those things when we were still living in darkness. And that is what Paul is telling us in Romans 13, that we need to remove ourselves from this darkness because God has empowered us to do so through Jesus Christ. Verse 8, but now is the time to get rid of of anger. You remember he says we should wake up because you know things is boiling down. So he's reminding us here again that now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander and dirty language. Don't lie to each other for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. So he's telling us that for us to put on Jesus Christ, we need to take off some stuff. And in verse 10 now, he says, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters. And he lives in all of us. So what Paul here is telling us, friends, that we are new creatures. We are a new creation in Jesus Christ. So we need to put off our old manner of living, our old thought patterns. He tells us, let this mind be in you that is in Jesus Christ. You know, our pastor, Pastor Joyce, was reminding us yesterday that for you to put on something, you have to become, actually become, like the person that you're going to put on. Because when you do that, then you, know, you, you, you will experience all the, the, the newness that comes with being that person. Jesus Christ, we are commanded to put him on. Put him on. When we put on Jesus Christ, because some people may ask, how do I put on Jesus Christ? 
Jesus Christ made a promise to us. He says that he's not going to leave us as orphans. He's going to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will be with us. He will teach us of the things that he, Jesus Christ, told us. He will lead us into our truth. He will bring back to our remembrance the things that we have learned in our Bible studies. When you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, as he says, to transform your mind so that it is renewed, then the identity that is in Jesus Christ will slowly come of, cover you. And that is why Paul says in, in, in Romans um, 13, um, in respect to the, the, the light, it, it says in, in one of the um, um, translation that we should put on this armor of light. Armor meaning, you know, you clothe yourself. And it is that armor is going to give you protection because that is what soldiers used to do. They used to put on body armor that was made from metal that would, you know, when, when, when arrows and swords, you know, came at them, it would protect them. So this armor of light, this newness that we find in Jesus Christ, that is what Paul is explaining to us that we need to put on so that when the fiery darts come about, we will be able to stand test of time. Because let us turn back to Romans chapter 13. And he, he says in verse 12 again, The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the, the shining armor of right living. Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. And the day here represents Jesus Christ. Because you can see everything very clearly. It says, don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, 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 brethren, clothe yourself, put on the presence of Jesus Christ, and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. So once you put on Jesus Christ, you remember Jesus Christ was telling us, you know, of, of, of the story of this man who was demon-possessed, and he was freed. He was released from that demon possession. And Jesus says, because the man did not replace it, he did not replace that emptiness now with something. What happened that his new state here now became worse than where he was because when the demons went about trying to find somewhere new and couldn't find, they said, let us go back and check. To see if that place is still empty. And when they came back, it was empty, swept clean. And they came with their friends. So that man became worse off than we were. So what Paul here is reminding us is that once we put off the dark deeds of the world that we used to live in, we need to put on something. We can't stay naked. Because Satan, you remember the scripture says that he is going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we need to be quickly be doing the things that we need to do by putting on Jesus Christ so that our true identity will be made known. Again, Paul tells us in verse 14, above all, clothe yourself Sorry, not, not, not um, Romans. In Colossians. Let us go back to Colossians chapter 3. And let us start in verse 12. So we were reading, you know, um, from verse 5 down to verse 11. The things that we should put to death. 
But now, in verse 12, Paul tells us that since God chose you, you know, we did not choose God. God chose you to be the holy people he loves. Then you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You realize that these are all relational attributes because God has made us to be relational beings. How can you say you love God who you cannot see and hate your brother who you can see? We need to have a loving relationship with each other here on earth. So Paul here reminds us in verse 12 of Colossians 3. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, then you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy. You, you, you must clothe yourself with kindness towards even your very enemy. You should be humble, brethren. Let this gentle spirit overshadow you. Be patient in all that you do. Make allowance for each other's faults. Don't be quick to judge each other. And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, see it again here, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule your hearts, for as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. So as we put on Jesus Christ, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And he says, whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Brethren, this fundamental shift in who we are, we were not a people once upon a time. But now we are a part of God's holy family. Now we are a, a special people because we are sons and daughters of the Most High. It says this fundamental shift in who we are will lead us, will lead us, brothers and sisters, to change our mindset in how we are. What are we doing because of this transformation? What are we now doing because we have put on Christ? The fact that if we put on Jesus Christ, brethren, then we must see fruit bearing in our lives. As a tree, they tell you, farmers will tell you, that the more you prune the tree, the more it will bear. You know, when you look at the, those scissors, those cutting scissors that they use and the cutlasses, you kind of feel the pain that the tree is going through. <laughs> so as Christians, we will get those pruning because the, the scripture tells us that God will chasten those whom he loves. So sometimes it is going to rough, it be rough, it is going to be painful. But that pain will truly bring fruit Fruit that people will truly enjoy, brothers and sisters. And I said um, several weeks ago that we should see ourselves as this tree. Jesus Christ being the root that is giving you the sap that you just blossom in and bear in. And the people that are out there in darkness will just see the beauty of the fruit and they will come and pick from it. And in so doing, they will get that blessing. And we'll be able to engraft them into this tree so they too can blossom and bear more fruit. So what do I do now? Once we realize who we are, then we will truly understand that we will just follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. Get to know him. 
get to know his voice. The scripture says, the, the, the songwriter says, his voice makes a difference. When he speaks, it relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice that I hear that makes a difference. So what? I will follow that voice all the days of my life. So once again, brothers and sisters, once you realize who you are, then what do I do now? will truly become so much clearer. So may God continue to transform us as we clothe ourselves in Jesus Christ so that we will truly say like Jesus Christ, not my will, but thy will be done. Let us pray. Holy, righteous, loving Father, we thank you that we have truly come to understand who you are. We thank you for who you have made us to be. We thank you, Father Almighty, that you are now using us to open the minds of those who are in darkness, that they too may see and come to know who you are, so that their lives may be transformed also. We thank you, Father Almighty, that you have not left us often by ourselves, because often by ourselves, we could not put on Jesus Christ. But you have been there with us every step of the way. And you have given us the help that we need. The Holy Spirit is here to walk with us. To lead us into the path of righteousness. So we thank you so very much that day by day. We truly are seeing new mercies from you. We understand more about the love that you have shed abroad in our hearts. We pray that you will just help us Father Almighty. That we will truly manifest that love in our day to day living. And that people will truly see the light of Jesus Christ shining through us. That they will see the good works. And they will understand that that is not the work of human beings. It must be God working in us. And in so doing, they will give you honor and glory. And in so doing also, their lives will truly be changed. Because they will truly understand who they can become in you. So we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the opportunity of gathering together to worship in this fashion. And we pray, Father Almighty, that your kingdom will truly come very, very soon because that is the only solution to our problem here on earth. We are looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ. We will truly be singing, Great is thy faithfulness, because what you say is what you do. So we just bless you, Father. We praise you. We magnify you. And we just give you thanks. If one makes it possible, your son, our elder brother, our high priest, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters.